All right, let's work on our compound inequalities. So here, this is one way of writing an and problem. Another way of writing an and problem is you can write it like this. All right, so you can write it like that, or you can write it like this. Now, the way that you solve these is you'd have to separate it anyway and then solve each one individually. So we separated it, so we'll solve this one. So seven is greater than two x plus three. Then we're gonna subtract by three on both sides. We're left with four is greater than two x. Divide by two, divide by two. 2 is less than x. Then we'll solve this one over here. We're going to subtract 3 on both sides. We're going to be left with 2x is less than or equal to 16 divided by 2. x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, I did subtract 3 and then I divided it by 2 just in case. You didn't see me you didn't hear me say it so now we just have to graph these so we're going to find two and we're going to find eight and so x is greater than two so i know it's going this way and x is less than eight so this circle is going to get filled and this circle is going to be open and they're going towards each other and that's it now I'm going to do the or. They're always separated like this. They're not put together. So this is going to be an or. There's only one way of writing it. And a little or in the middle. So when I solve this, I subtract 5 on both sides. I'm left with 2 is greater than x. And then I add 9 to both sides. x is greater than 29. So if I go here, I'll find a 2. Open circle. And x is less than, it's not being eaten, so it's going in that direction. And then here, I find 29, right? And also an open circle, because it's not underlined. And then x is greater than that, so it goes that way. So how an or is gonna look. All right, now let's do an absolute value problem. So when you have an absolute value problem, you make sure there's nothing on the outer part of the, of the absolute value problem. And then you split it into two, the original. So if this equals nine, the absolute value of nine is nine. But if this equals negative nine in here, then the absolute value of negative nine is also nine because the absolute value is the distance from zero. And negative nine is nine steps from zero. So this has two answers. I'm gonna subtract five on this side x equals 4 is one of my answers and then minus 5 minus 5 x equals negative 14 is the other answer now let me show you an example of something that's not set up yet this in here so here we have it as absolute value of x plus 3 multiplied by 2 minus 5 so i have to fix this i want it to look like this one where there's just an absolute value happening so we're going to add 5 to both sides. That's gone. Now I'm left with 2 absolute value x plus 3 equals 14. Then I have to get rid of the 2. The 2 is next to a parenthesis or at least some kind of grouping. So it's multiplying. So I'm going to divide by 2. And now this is x plus 3 equals 7. Absolute value of x plus 3. Now this can be split into two parts. It can be split into x plus 3 equals 7, and then x plus 3 equals negative 7. So this is going to subtract. x is going to equal 4. This is going to subtract. x is going to equal negative 10. And those are my two answers for this one. All right? Now, with absolute value, you can also have inequalities. Now, when it's less than, uh, I say it less than, because this is an and statement, okay? So you'd solve both of them. 
you'd have x plus 3 is less than 5. And then, because the 5 sign is going to change, this sign is also going to change. So it's going to be x plus 3 is greater than negative 5. Now you solve each one. This is x is less than 2, because I subtract 3 from both sides. This is going to be x is greater than negative 8, because I subtract 3 from both sides. And I know that this is an and statement. Okay? This one, great, greater than, I say it greater than, okay? Because this is going to make an or statement. So this is going to be x plus 2 is greater than 9 or x plus 2 is less than negative 9. And then this is going to be uh, x is greater than 7. Because I subtract 2 on both sides. This is going to become x. Ooh, I'm off screen, guys. Oof, hopefully I described it well enough because I was completely off screen. So I split them, grade tour, and then I put x plus 2 over here is greater than 9, which is what the original statement is. And then x plus 2 is less than negative 9 over here. So it's going to be x is greater than 7, and this is going to be x is less than um, negative 11 after it subtracts two on both sides. Sorry about being off screen for a little bit. Hopefully you can look at this. Now let's work on our last part, converting forms. So we're going to convert this into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form means that y is going to be by itself and that there's no parentheses. So it looks kind of like this. Okay? So first we're going to get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to be left with y plus 2 equals 2 thirds x. And then 2 times 6 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now that the parentheses is gone. Now we have to leave y by itself. So we subtract 2 on both sides. We are left with y equals 2 over 3x plus 2 and I've converted the point-slope form into slope-intercept form. Now we're going to convert point-slope form into standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. So we're leaving constant by itself this time. We're leaving the constant by itself. And we're going to be moving everything else to the other side. So first, there is no parentheses in standard form either, so that's going to be our first step. You saw me do it above, so I'm just going to immediately leave it like that okay so now we have to move this to the other side and we have to move this to the other side so there's this imaginary line here so we're just moving things if you move this to the other side okay once it crosses this it's going to change its sign so this is going to be negative 2 over 3x I have a y here, okay? I'm not doing anything with it, but I don't want you to think they're multiplying, so I'm just going to put a plus sign next to it. It is a positive y. If it would have been a negative y, I would have written a minus. Now, uh, this 2 is going to move to that side, so I haven't done anything with that 4, but I'll move that 2 over here, and it's going to become a negative 2. So this is going to make negative 2 over 3x plus y equals... Two. Now we're close, but these capital letters are telling you that they cannot be fractions. And A is supposed to be positive. So to fix that, I'm going to multiply everything by a negative number, which will change the sign of the beginning. And I'm going to multiply everything by the denominator, which is 3 in this situation. So if I multiply this negative 3 to everything, I'm going to get 2 x, because it's negative 3 times 2. Negative times a negative makes a positive. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Then negative 3 times y is negative 3y. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And we are officially done. That's my dog sneezing behind me. Uh, okay, now 
I have this. I'm turning this into standard form. So we're leaving the constant by itself again. So again, I have to move this. Now we did one with an, I'm gonna make this negative so we don't have to do the same thing again. So I'm gonna move this to the other side because we're trying to leave the constant by itself. So if I move this to the other side, it's going to become a positive two over five X. Again, the Y, I'm gonna put a plus Y, so I've separated it. And now I have a two. I have to multiply everything by the denominator because I cannot leave this as a fraction. So I'm multiplying everything by five. I'm gonna be left with two X plus five Y equals 10. And I'm done. Standard form. Last one is to turn standard form into slope intercept form, meaning we are leaving y by itself. So first I'm going to move the 5x to the other side. So negative 2y equals minus 5x. And there's a 12 here, but I don't want you to think they're multiplying, so I'm going to put a plus sign. Then we're going to divide by negative two because negative two is multiplying with y. So I'm gonna divide by negative two. That gets rid of the negative two. Divide by negative two, divide by negative two. If I divide everything on this side by negative two, it means I have to divide everything on this side by negative two. Causing the final answer to be y equals five over two x minus six. Why did this turn into positive? Because now this was a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. And here is a positive 12 divided by a negative 2 causes it to be a negative 6. And we're done.